Welcome to the Get Your Act Together podcast. I am your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today I have a wonderful guest for you. Hello, Brandon, and welcome to the show. What's going on, Kelly? Thank you for having me, and I appreciate that nice introduction. <laughs> all right, Brandon, can you tell all the nice folks out there what you do, who you are, what your business is about? Yeah, so I am the founder of Lynchpin Sales Interactive. Uh, been, you know, we started, I guess I started this going on six and a half years ago. Um, with the sole goal of helping small businesses get, get sell more, right? And early on, it was mostly around your more traditional type sales methods, but quickly started seeing the trends whenever it came to this whole digital thing. Now we have built a team uh, that is solely focused on helping people sell their products and services online by creating digital sales systems. So, you know, we really focus on making media work as opposed to, you know, just the more of the, the traditional media buying and things of that nature. We really want to not just understand the top of the funnel, so to speak, but what happens past that? How do we get people converting? And then how do we get them coming back? And it, it really takes a full A to Z type approach and a holistic strategy. And that's what we focus on. Who do you work with? Is it, do you have a certain small business? What is your kind of your ideal client? We work a lot in the e-commerce space, obviously. That's kind of a, a, a low-hanging fruit whenever you talk about the, the clientele there. But we do work with more brick and mortar as well. If they provide some type of a service, usually a service where they're looking for people to schedule appointments online. How do we get them from becoming aware that you exist into your world and ecosystem so they continue to consume your content, warms them up to your brand, to your business, then ultimately schedule an appointment or schedule a call. And so we do have traditional companies that we work with as well. So, you know, we're kind of 60-40 uh, whenever it comes to that. So we work a lot with obviously e-commerce and retail, but we do uh, work with service-based businesses as well. Okay. So I will preface this by saying I'm an ops girl, not a marketing person. <laughs> I'm marketing um, by need yeah. than <laughs> by love. Yeah. Um, and because it's part of the business, right? Um, and we are this year doing a lot more with marketing. So I'm fascinated by all the things you're going to tell me today um, because we are doing such a big push in so many different ways. When someone comes to you and says, I really want to up my marketing and uh, I haven't really been doing much, where do you think they should start? Where do you start to try to get a strategy together for them? What do you want the end goal to be? What are we, what are we looking to accomplish ultimately? And how does that... And how do we reverse engineer it back to figure out where we need to start? And that's always what we want to accomplish because we're very focused on the end result. If, if the end result's not happening, nothing else matters. And, it's, and the relationship's never going to work. So we've got to make sure what is the end goal? How does that work in from a profitability standpoint? Is it even obtainable doing certain methods or do you have to look at other strategies? And that's why starting at the end, really understanding what we're trying to accomplish, really understanding what we need to accomplish from a margin, profit margin standpoint. And then that will allow us to come up with the best strategy in order to get you there. So that's always where I focus on starting first is what are you envisioning? What are you looking for in an ideal scenario? What would you like to happen in this perfect world? Okay, let's start there and then let's figure out how we make it happen. Do you find a lot of people just say more leads? A hundred percent of the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, look, at the end of the day, we all do all of this for the same goal. We want sales, we want leads, but we also want sales from leads as well. So, you know, and that's where, where we're a little bit unique because my big background, my main background when I was in corporate. America was largely in sales. And I got started on the traditional method, which is why I'm so passionate about the digital side of stuff, because I was used to knocking on doors in 100 degree weather in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, you know, in a suit. Uh, and that's kind of how I started my lead gen days. And I see this and I'm like, wow, you can do all this. You can automate that. You can, and it's phenomenal. And so we all, all want the same outcome. And so that's where at the end of the day, that's not necessarily what I'm referring to, you know, obviously, and that's kind of how I started. What are we looking to accomplish? Obviously, it's going to be sales, right? But let's kind of understand how we get to that cell and what's going to make the most sense. And then that's how we map out the strategy and budgets and all that fun stuff. 
Got it. Yeah. I mean, you're saying corporate America. I was on Wall Street for a long time um, as the ops person. So I was not selling, yeah. but I sat there and listened to those billions of call calls putting through by the cold calling kids trying to figure out like one more sell, one more sell, one more sell. And that I think is in my head a lot with sales and almost that yucky kind of connotation. Do you find that people have that kind of yuckiness when they come to you? Like they're like, oh, well, I want more leads. I want more sales, but I don't know how to do it that it doesn't feel yucky. No, I, I I don't really get it. And it, it and maybe it's just because I've been doing this so long that I, I'm not thinking about it. But most of the time, typically this is how the businesses are, are built and grown until you get to the part. Um, and I'm speaking solely from my own experience. And I built my business the same way that we help other businesses do. I've been in the trenches. We still practice what we preach. We still grow that way. So I, I've been there and I've experienced it, right? So uh, I have a different level of experience whenever it comes to understanding the, the business growth and whenever it really makes sense to start investing and start looking to spending money uh, to open up your audience and make your awareness a lot bigger. And typically what happens is, uh, one, people try to go to the marketing and advertising maybe a little too early on in their business. And it's very hard because a lot of stuff hasn't been worked out in their business as a whole. Uh, the other side of it is they've been in business for a while. They're doing good and they have a good feeling about selling because most of the time they are selling to people that already know, like, and trust them. So they're in a sphere that they're already a part of. They're doing something more locally, part of networking and all that. So they got this really good relationship already built or they're being directly referred which these are the strongest forms of leads you can get. And so those conversations, obviously you start feeling and, and, and having confidence, which is good that you can close and that you do, you can sell. And it seems to work where the eye opener comes in. And it's very important to, to think about this and for us to set these expectations as well is that the game is going to change with your sales whenever you start doing marketing and advertising and you start getting more colder leads coming in. That's a whole different conversation. That is a whole different close. And a lot of businesses aren't prepared for that, even if they've got a sales team and they've got all that, they, the scripts haven't changed. They're still selling to what they're traditionally getting, which is mostly a lot of times referrals or word of mouth. And that's a whole different conversation. The whole process needs to be looked at uh, not maybe at the beginning, but because you don't want to fix what's what may not be broken. But as you're getting in, you're starting to see some of those bottlenecks. Thing, the results aren't coming in, especially with that sales process. Then it's like, OK, let's analyze where the bottleneck is in the sales process. But at least we know this is where the bottleneck is and not necessarily at the top of funnel. And so that's a whole other conversation to get into. But um, but yeah, so I I don't necessarily get it too much but yeah i mean here and there for sure i mean it's it's a uh, it's definitely a whole different skill set yeah i, I was just kind of curious on that because i feel like if they're coming to someone who does sales <laughs> they're probably looking to do sales so <laughs> i didn't know if that would you were still getting those people that were resistant to it yeah. um yeah you know um so when they are coming to you um what kind of level of i guess self-awareness do they should they be having do they are you helping them figure out their ideal client? Are you helping them figure out their target, uh, their audience, that kind of stuff, uh, the platforms they should be on? Or do they kind of have to come in with, I don't know, what level? Uh, mission, vision, values, like uh, whatever. What do you like to see people come to you with? Or are you going to help them with all of that? I like really all we need because we'll, we'll help through all that. We've been doing this a very long time. We have worked with businesses uh, across the globe of, of all different sizes, everything from starting from scratch, including our own, all the way to, you know, businesses that are nine figures, hundreds of employees, all that. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've had a unique experience working at different levels of different things. And so um, when they come to us, if they, what I refer to as the hard stuff is already done, meaning they have taken an idea and they generated sales on their own. They've proven concept, even if it's on a very small, you know, group or very small level. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. They've proven to that and they've proven that there is some bit of a process there. Then it just becomes, okay, we've got a legitimate business. You've done, you've fulfilled. Um, we've proven, you've proven concept, even if it's on a lower level. Now it's about, okay, let's really dive in. Let's analyze who you've already had in. Let's leverage that data. Let's, let's look at who your best clients have been in order to understand who we need to market to. When you're trying to figure out your ideal audience and you don't have a big pool to pull from, you've probably got an, a, a client or two, or maybe somebody you've worked with in the past that you just really enjoyed, or you had really good results. And it was like smooth. And you're like, man, if I could just get everybody to fit in that world. Okay, great. Let's talk about them. When did they come to you? What problems did they have? What questions did they ask? And we start working through that. And then we'll start creating campaigns around that. Plus it helps us identify, do we need to start on this platform? Do we need to, you know, what type of strategy do we need to focus on? Do we need to focus on just getting them into the database? I mean, there's so many different things to, to really look at, but um, that's kind of a, a core thing that, that I look at is just, you know, have you at least proven concept yet, uh, even if it's on a small level? Yeah, I feel like a lot of times people come to me for operations and they they don't know where they're going. So it's very hard for me to get them there. So I was curious as to like, <laughs> if, oh, uh, sure. right? Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. So it's really hard for me to make it work. <laughs> yes, yeah, trust me. I think we can all uh, share stories whenever it comes to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, operations is just, I mean, it is so critical as well. And that's the one thing is, You've got to be able to really have all aspects. If you really want to maximize your investment in marketing, advertising, sales, there's you have to make sure your operations are are intact, are are there, and uh, working at the highest levels possible and streamlined. Um, otherwise, if that's not in place and you're not able to provide that uh, level of service, or you have a lot of bottlenecks internally. All marketing and advertising is going to do is expose that. And so we want to make sure that that is definitely nailed down as well. And, um, you know, it's not necessarily my cup of tea, which is why, you know, I I have people that are skilled in that area and I, I let them do what they do best. Yeah, you could preset all day, all day. Tell the people that the operations is needed. <laughs> oh, because, it's, it's crucial. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people, it's all about marketing and I have to get leads in. I like, got to get leads in. and then. They bring them in and there's not enough capacity that business can't handle it. And then yeah. all of a sudden you have this terrible reputation as someone who can't show up. For sure. Bottlenecks. You're going to have issues that arise as you grow. It's just, it's going to happen. But as if you're built on a solid foundation, then you can make quick decisions and correct them easily. You can do the right thing to continue making that experience. You can identify and project and forecast where there may be a bottleneck coming based off of what you're seeing with your marketing and advertising, which is why really having that down uh, before you start ramping things up, that doesn't mean you don't want to get started to some degree. Just do it responsibly in a way that you're making sure that, hey, this may take off. And if it does, here's kind of what we would do. Um, or just start off more conservatively. And, and one thing that I talk about a lot, and we've set up our programs this way, is kind of a walk, run, sprint type model. Like, let's just start off and we'll move so that we're not running into inventory issues. We're not running into op issues. Mm -hmm. We're not running into all of these things that could prove to, to be costly. You have a client, you want to show them the strategy. You want to, you know, make everything work for them. And they're going to want to know it's working, right? They're paying you money. They want to know it's working. How are you setting this up? Like what metrics are you looking for? What ROI should they be expecting? Like what should they be looking for? So it's going to vary depending upon where you're at in your business, what your budget is, that's um, going to be comfortable for you to invest into this and uh, really what the strategy is. But at the end of the day, it's important, uh, regardless of how you're starting off, if you're starting off with more of a walk or a run, or you're, you're at the level where you're ready to kind of sprint and scale and do all that fun stuff, you know, early on, it, it's a lot easier because you're really focusing on a lot less KPIs and a lot less benchmarks to understand that it's working. And it's important to, to know when is it working 
but not just based off of revenue coming in. How do I know that even though it may not be producing uh, revenue yet, how do I know that we're moving in a positive direction? And what does that look like? And what are we looking for the first 30 days, the first 60 days, the first 90 days? And what are we trying to accomplish during that time frame so that we know that we're building on a solid foundation and not on a house of cards, which is where, you know, especially early on years ago, you could do so much in the digital space that you could see growth so quickly and you're built one, one algorithm change in your business is done. I, I saw, I saw that very early on, uh, especially with Facebook, whenever they went more of a pay to play and they, you know, these businesses have built their followers and then they said, well, you got to pay. And it, it crushed a lot of businesses. And so really making sure that you're being built on a solid foundation and early on is in my, and what we've seen work best is focusing on building your database first and foremost. We just need to get people to become where you exist and want to exchange their contact information for something that you can provide them that's also relevant to your ideal audience. So you know you're getting people in that are interested in what it is you have to offer and show you know some uh, consideration to learn more. And then once you get them in the database, you are able to have a direct line of communication through email, through text, through chat, and all of these different methods. Um, and you control and own it. And so then at that point, we really base a lot on what is the cost per lead of the contact going into the database? What, you know, what are we looking for as far as growth in that database? What are we looking for as far as conversion or, you know, the, the uh, stats, whenever the data, whenever it comes to the database interactions, uh, you know, open rates, all of that stuff. Um, and, there's very specific things that we're looking for to know, okay, we're moving in the right direction. We're seeing that growth. We're seeing it do what we want it to do. Um, and top of funnel, you know, really concentrate on click-through rates and uh, CPM. So the cost to get in front of a thousand uh, audience members and all of that is, is very important whenever you're trying to really find winning campaigns. And then as you continue to grow and scale, the devil's in the details. I mean, you have to to really make sure that you're watching uh, almost 24-7 uh, what campaigns are running, what the stats are showing, the data that you're getting so you can make quick changes. So hopefully that helps answer the question. But um, really setting expectations up front to know what is positive momentum so that you know that your money is being well spent. And even if it's not generating sales within that first 30 days yet, it's showing all the signs that the, the dam's about to break. And that's what we want to make sure you're aware of up front. Because if you do it afterwards, it, you know, it, it becomes, well, you know, is that really true? Or are you just kind of stringing me along a little you're bit? You're just making it look so like try, a... <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we try to get ahead of that as much as possible and set those expectations. Yeah, I think that's a, a really important point because um, especially for someone who doesn't know marketing very well, like you're going to know, but this person may not know what those numbers are. And they may be like, this is terrible. But you're like, this is great. Like conversion yes. rates of 6% sounds fantastic to one person. And that sounds horrible to another person. Exactly. So knowing that going in, I think is so important to know. Yes. Yeah, 100%. And it's important to talk about up front because you want to say, okay, what's your what is your ideal scenario? What would it, what would need to happen in order for this to be considered su successful for you? And that way we can kind of gauge, okay, one, it's doable and we're very confident and we just need to get going. Or maybe the expectations are a little off and we need to adjust that. And if, if that doesn't work for you and you know we're not setting the best expectations according to what you're thinking, then yeah, we may not be the best fit for you. And we want to make sure that you feel good about that. You know, maybe somebody can go guarantee that for you, but this is what, based off our experience, what we would be looking at. Um, and so really making sure that those, as much of that that we can have up front uh, in order to make sure go, getting into the partnership that it's something that lines up to be uh, a, a huge success and, um, and making sure it's the best fit. Uh, obviously, for what they're looking to accomplish and, and kind of how we work as well. Got it. So I know that this, the, with S uh, iOS changes and Facebook ad changes and all these kind of things, 
this market, everything has been changing so much in the last couple of years. Um, yeah. What do you see that is really working lately? Are there things that are really working that are not working? What do you think will be popular, good, I guess, this year? So a few things. So concentrating, I can't stress it enough, concentrating on building up your database is the, the number one thing that I would recommend. Um, people don't realize that email, and now you've got text, which even increases the conversion rate, is that and I think McKinsey uh, Consulting Group, large consulting group throughout the world, recently, um, I don't know the exact time of the study, but they were showing what mediums or what methods actually drive conversions. And meaning, is it social media? Is it Facebook? Is it email? Is it search? And obviously, search is going to be your number one means. So that means that somebody's going in, they're saying, I'm looking for red shoes. And then they go and buy because they have intent. So the next one, which, you know, obviously social media was, I mean, it was down at the bottom. It was really, really low, all, all social media platforms from a conversion standpoint. But right below the search was email. And that is whenever you're talking, I think it, I think the, the stats show that for every dollar that you invest in the email marketing, you know, database management, personalization, uh, you get $42 in return. And that's still, you know, that, I mean, that's huge ROI. Huge. It's just, yeah. the thing is, is that it's, it's not as shiny object. It's not as flashy as, you know, going and talking about doing this on TikTok or doing this other stuff. The thing is, it's just, it's simple. It's basic. It's, it's, you know, really how businesses have been built over the years. It's just now we can put them into a, uh, digital database and it becomes a lot easier to automate stuff and get out, get messaging out in front of where, you know, back in my day, whenever I first started, my database was a cardboard box with index cards, you know, oh, yes. um, <laughs> back in the mid two thousands. And so um, that would be number one is focus on how do I get people to become where I exist and then get them to give me their contact information so that then I can market to them on the back end. And then you set up and have really good strategies and campaigns. That's where we see, just a, a ton of success and it, the people that the businesses and partners that were doing this and had us managing this part of their business as well, not just the ads, not just the websites and the conversion rate optimization, but the database and email and all of that, they went through the iOS 14 with flying colors and continued to scale and grow. And it has been just continuing, um, obviously. Uh, the next thing is multi-channel marketing, you know, obviously, leveraging retargeting um, in order to get your brand out everywhere that your audience is. So they they interact with an ad, they watch a video, they watch a piece of content, they go to your website, making sure that no matter if they go read an article online, your brand pops up. Doesn't matter if they go to YouTube, a video of your brand pops up. They go to TikTok, they go to anywhere um, across Facebook, Instagram, your brand continues to pop pop up and hopefully with new content that continues to move them through that buyer's journey uh, because it's all touch points. So being seen everywhere, it's built in credibility. Uh, mere exposure is a real thing whenever it comes to psychology and building a relationship uh, between a brand and, and a consumer. So that would be another one. Um, as far as prospecting goes, like just getting your brand out there in front of a lot of people, but for the least amount of cost or our CPM, TikTok is a great avenue for that right now. Uh, it's uh, a big, a big difference uh, than what we're saying on like Facebook and Instagram. However, we still look at Facebook and Instagram just because of the targeting and all that. And TikTok will probably get there at some point. They're still leading whenever it comes to a lot of campaigns that you're trying to run, especially early on as you're getting started. And do you see with TikTok, um, that doesn't surprise me, but like, do you see that as a certain kind of niche or a certain kind of age targeted there that's working there? Or do you kind of see it across the board? Well, the, the you know, the the demographics on TikTok have, have changed over the last 18 months, 24 mm. months. You're seeing an older crowd get on, you're seeing, um, you know, just a more, a, a different audience where early on it was more skewing towards the um, the younger uh, ages, obviously. 
but you're seeing that, especially the last 18 months or so. And, and, you know, the attention is there and that's what you got to look at as well is where's the attention. And then how do I then, uh, understand what mindset they're in when they're on that specific platform and just how do I get my message out there so that they're seeing it? Um, and it really comes back to attention. TikTok is especially from a prospecting standpoint, meaning you're trying to get more people aware that you exist or to see your brand. Uh, it's definitely uh, a great, great resource. Hmm. Yes, I, I haven't ventured there yet. I feel very old for that. <laughs> oh no, That's I why mean, I was interested to see. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's obviously, and you see, you know, you've got the government making different, you know, uh, regulations around it and all that, which I think uh, does has make people hesitant uh, as well. So you got a lot of that that's going around. But, you know, at the end of the day, whenever it comes to marketing and advertising, we're just looking at where's the attention and where can we get the most attention uh, for the most cost efficient uh, investment and time investment. And so that's kind of what we look at whenever it comes to that. And I'm guessing, especially because you are uh, seeing so much on TikTok, is a lot of the content you're putting, you're helping with your clients with, is it video based mostly? Uh, is it long form? Is it a mix? So obviously TikTok and Instagram Reels, even Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts, they're all kind of similar formats. Um, and so, you know, uh, if you're trying to create an omnipresence, it's, it, it, you can do so on a lot of different platforms. Uh, most of it is some bit of a short form video, uh, vertical type video uh, that seems to be working the best right now, just because that's what people are, are consuming, um, especially since TikTok came along. Almost everybody uh, or every platform uh, has changed the way that they go about showing video content and tried to get in that game a little bit, because I, I think TikTok found a, a bit of a uh, of an opportunity with the way that they showed specific content. So, um, you know, short form, but look, it, it varies. It varies from market to industry. And that's why it's so important uh, to test. But we do, yeah, we do obviously a lot of video clipping and all that as we kind of refer to it as. Yeah. Yes. I, that's been such a huge thing here as well. It's so people react to that. Uh, you were saying about uh, like your list, your database list. Um, that has been a big thing as well here because right. uh, you own it. That's a thing, but I have a small list. It was never something I really pushed for. We had referrals, but it is the place that I get the most engagement, the most people in, are interacting with me. So as you're saying that, I'm like, yeah, of course that makes sense. And you're owning it. You're not like Facebook can't just kick you out of it. 100%. It becomes, the, and you're not alone. Like I'm, I'm in the industry. I've done, and early on, I didn't focus on that either. You know, I was victim of shiny object, you know, uh, and all that myself. So I was doing all this other stuff. And it wasn't until the last year or two where we started to really kind of more focus on that. And it's never too late to start building your database. It's just now as well, the database, and this is why I always stress it for new businesses is immediately start on how do I get people into my database? The database is your strongest asset as a business. It is going to be a negotiating chip. If you ever try to sell or, or open up and expand into other opportunities, whether that's wholesale or distribution and all that, because they want to see that you've got your own distribution and you've got your own followers, you've got your own audience that you control. And then, then you can take that and say, Hey, look, I've got 10,000 people in my database. I got 100,000 people in my database. Whenever I send an email out, because it's a numbers game, whenever it comes to the database, and on average, databases convert across all industries and um, out there, it's usually around 10%. Now, some may be a lot lower than that. Some, even a lot of our clients, I mean, they're doing 35 to 40% of their overall revenue just through the database. And so if you know that every time I send an email out, I get 10%, let's just take that number, then it, it's it's math, it's consistency, it's predictability, and it's building your business on a solid foundation. So that way you've always got that. You can always tap into it. Your database is the people that are going to buy your new product, take advantage of your new service, to you know take advantage of any specials that you may have running because they already know, like, and trust you because you are staying in front of them. And so that's why it's so important uh, to start focusing on that. But I, I was right there with you. There's nothing to feel 
bad about, but just now that becomes a part of your strategy and a big part of your focus. And then basing all of your, a lot of your decisions on focusing on building that database along with direct conversions. But the main goal is I know if I can get them in the database, then I'm going to be able to market to them and have a direct line of communication to them on the back end. And then it just becomes numbers. Yeah. And I think we have to sometimes remember that it, it's a long-term game. They want to hear about you a lot, right? You were saying before touch points, how many, I mean, you heard tons of different numbers about how many touch points it is before a conversion, but it's not one, right? They don't just go, oh, hi, I've met you today. I'll, I'll spend all my money with you. Um, do you, are you do, how long do you think, I think this is a question you probably can't answer, but how long do you think you're getting this list built up before you're seeing uh, a lot of movement or revenue or something from that list? Yeah. Uh, great question. So the touch points at, and if I'm not answering it correctly, just interrupt me, but um, <laughs> the touch points really, and I, even like a year ago, um, I remember seeing a report on the amount of marketing messages that we see on a daily basis now and this day and age for even versus 2010. Uh, but today it's estimated about 10,000 marketing messages that we see on a daily basis. Sounds wow. insane. But if you think about it, everything from billboards that you pass to, to you know, signage to all of that stuff you're seeing on your phone, on Facebook, I mean, you name it, I believe it. And then why it can vary. So what we see whenever somebody opts into the database, typically, you know, you can go off the, the seven to 12 rule where that at least gets them to engage or potentially go and make a purchase or, you know, take action. So sometimes between seven and 12, because it's a little more direct, if they're in your database, you're able to, to stay in front of them and have a little bit more control over that. Now, if it's just a play, and this was the number that this report had come out with, was that from the first time, and I think this was mostly talking about if you're marketing on digital and touch points when they see a piece of your content, they see a post, whatever, uh, from the first time they see you, it's usually on average about 21 days that it takes along with at least 32 touch points. 32. Yeah. Wow. And, and when, you, uh, yeah. when you say seven to 12, are you talking months? No, 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 Sorry. no. We can get them into, yeah, if, as far as the months thing goes, that's going to be, that's predicated on your strategy and how much you're, you know, obviously putting out there and how often. And so, you know, obviously the more that you're able to put out there, you have a good strategy that you're able to stick to, you're consistent with the messaging that you're putting out there and it's it's good copy, um, it's converting very well. I mean, seven to, to 12 touch points is really uh, what we see a lot is people will usually go from seeing an ad on Facebook or Instagram, then they see some retargeting campaigns, then they go to the website, then they opt in, then they see a few messages and then they're ready to to take action. Um, so that's kind of what we typically see if I just kind of, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but you know, just basically- No, that makes sense. Stuff that we see uh, a lot of times. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, how many times we see an ad before we like, all right, all right, I'll click on it now. Like, yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense. Yeah. So when are you going from more organic list building, um, content marketing to ads? When are you- bringing that up? Is there a place that there's a hard place where you're like, okay, I think you're at this level now that you should start doing Facebook ads? Or is it a, let's get in there and test right away? Like, what do you suggest on that? Well, I always suggest investing some type of money in, in ads, even if it's very small, $5, $10 a day. And because that's how you're going to at least have somewhat control over your message, getting out in front of people within your target market, you know, going on and organically doing it. Look, it's, it's great. It takes a long time. And I know that from personal experience and I test a lot of things that are out there in the marketplace myself so that then I can confidently come to you or go to a client or go to a partner and be able to say, look, here's the good and the bad. Here's the indifferent. Here's kind of what I found. Here's what we've seen. Um, so the organic we've seen, obviously, you want to have a good presence organically because people are going to go look you up. If they see your ad, they get referred to you. It doesn't matter. They find you on Google. They see a commercial. They see a billboard. Whatever it is, they're going to go look you up. 
And if you haven't posted anything, at least on a weekly basis, one time a week, at least, and it's been a year, automatically, psychologically, it's kind of like, what's going on here? You know, uh, is this legitimate? And are they still in business? <laughs> is, are they still in business? You know, just yeah. little things like that. And that's just the world we live in now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I bet if anybody's sitting here thinking about it and they're going, no way, that's a big deal. You could probably retrace your steps of the last time you made a decision to buy something. And you probably went to a social media page of some sort. And uh, it probably, if you ended up doing business, it probably wasn't stagnant and hadn't been managed in months or years or whatever it may be. Um, so we really look at that and say, hey, in order to keep your brand, in order to just kind of keep up to date, make sure you at least have something organically. So when people go check you out, they know that you're in business, they know that things are happening. Um, and then you may want to take, if you've got a small budget, take that budget, especially if you're early on, you're trying to get a, make your name in the marketplace. The name of the game is one, you got to get people to become aware you exist, but then you also have to give them a reason to want to consider potentially doing business with you. And the best way to do that is maybe come up with a very good offer or some type of a promo that you can put out there that then says, give me your email address and I'll send you the offer. And then that way you'll start to see some uh, people getting into your database and really focusing on that. So you're building up the database, which is an asset. Then you can essentially market to them for free um, or whatever the cost is for that email provider that you got to pay, which a lot of them are free until you get to, into several thousands. Um, and so that's where we really kind of look at, at starting. Now, when you're ready to start growing and kind of taking that next step is really once you get to a point, obviously, I always view it as a time versus money scenario. You know, you start getting busy, you start not having the time uh, to put the effort in. Maybe that's taking the sales calls. Maybe that's, you know, uh, you're having to, to be an operator, whatever it may mean. Um, you are not, you're, you're seeing growth and you're kind of pushing the limits and you're starting to feel a little overwhelmed, you know, you're not going to be able to get the stuff and you got to keep the business moving forward. So then it becomes, well, I got to bring somebody else in, or maybe I want to grow my sales team, or I would just want to grow my team in general. So at that point, the only option to keep your business growing, if you're going to hire somebody is to have a plan in place to continue growing the business, which is when you want to start growing with your ad spend, you want to start growing with your marketing because now you've got to cover the cost of that new individual you just brought in, or you've got to cover the cost of your new e-commerce brand of the operations that's going on and fulfillment and all this other stuff that comes along with it. So I really look at it and kind of how we've always set up and have set up our programs in progressionary ways is because everybody's not at the same part in their journey, but everybody needs to be doing something to grow their business. And so once they get to that point and they get to that point where it's kind of a time versus money, now I don't have as much time, but I got more money because I'm making more money. Okay, let's put that in and now let's grow it. But only if you want to grow your team or continue growing your business and brand. Otherwise, you're not going to like it because then it's just going to be bringing stuff in. You can't fulfill and you're kind of like, I'm good. I don't need more business right now. Okay, great put everything on pause or do some organic or just kind of keep something small out there to keep your awareness going and staying top of mind. So um, that's kind of how I always look at it. And uh, it's definitely something that you progress into. And when the timing's right, you kind of, okay, now it's time to take that next step. And then you, you kind of go from there. Yeah. I love the, just saying to have a plan because uh, knowing where you want to go, right. We talked about this in the beginning, but then, um, not getting in that cycle of like feast famine, like do a bunch of marketing. Now I have to go do a bunch of fulfillment. Now go back to do a bunch of marketing, like having that, like trying different things, trying ads, and then you can be able to ramp them up because now you don't have to go learn a whole thing. Right. 100%. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Well, I have had such a wonderful time talking sales with you <laughs> and I don't say that very often because it's not my first favorite topic. <laughs> Well, good. Uh, that makes me feel good at least. There you go. I, I love the idea of it. It always just makes me a little bit nervous. So um, I hope that uh, we today have 
inspired others to not uh, be worried about it being yucky and that there are things out there you can do, especially this building. And uh, Brandon, can you tell everyone where they can find you? Absolutely. You can go to our main website, lynchpincells.com. You can go to uh, at lynchpincells on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Would love that as well. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so uh, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions or just want to talk strategy, please reach out and uh, we're non-pressure. So uh, that's kind of how we roll. All right. Well, we'll put all this in the uh, show notes and this will be on LinkedIn and I'm not well, it'll be LinkedIn somebody. It'll be on YouTube uh, as well as the podcast, depending on where, how you're watching this today. Uh, Brandon, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. And I will see everyone else next week. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you have an agency or want to create one, come join my Facebook community, Get Your Agency Together, where we talk all the things growing and scaling your agency. For show notes and more info on all the things, head over to ReynoldsOBM.com. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at ReynoldsOBM. And finally, if you enjoy this podcast, I would love for you to give us a review on iTunes.